Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1220, the Church and School Tiny House Add-ons, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. This is an add-ons set, which means it requires a base die, and the base die for this one is the Tiny House pop-up, die number 1157. That's what makes the house and roof. And then the add-on set has all of the pieces that are specific to the church and school. So let me start by showing the assembly of the church. There are 11 pieces in the set, and I've set aside the two that are used only for a school, so we'll do that in the second assembly. And the other ones, I have already done some of the die cutting. So if the piece is just die cut, no special features, like these window frames, I just went ahead and cut them. This is the window backer. I used some score tape on the back of the cardstock before die cutting so that those would be stickers. That is completely optional. You can certainly use your glue. There is a die that will cut a set of double doors plus a door frame. So I've cut that out of a darker gray and then I have a lighter one ready to go here so that I can cut and have doors that are a little bit lighter. Okay, I'll set that on my machine, but before I get to die cutting, let me carry on showing the pieces that I pre-cut. There is a set of intertwined hearts that is a charm that fits on top of the church. So that can be used instead of the cross. You might use the hearts, for instance, when you're making an anniversary card. But for today's card, I'm doing a church wedding card. So I've die cut the cross. And then I like to cut the cross again, at least the top portion, just where the hole is, is all I really need, with some double-sided adhesive tape on the back. Then there are two circle dies in the set that are combined to make the stained glass window. So one of them is the frame, so it has all the little triangle cutouts. The other one is going to look similar, but the shapes in it are not cut out. They're just emboss or stencil. So that one I've got double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the cardstock. Now the die that cuts the second story, I just used the same cardstock that I did for my tiny house. And something to point out is that these right here, those are cut lines, so that is correct lest you think that those aren't supposed to cut, they are. These ones are the score lines here. Now you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die and it's at least big enough for the dies you're using. So since I'm doing small pieces, I'm just using my little easy cuts machine. Before removing the die, I want to use the stencil feature to add the handles to the doors. So I'm just doing that with a black pen. For the circle that backs the stained glass window, there is a stencil emboss feature on it. So you can either stencil through the die or since I have double-sided adhesive tape on the back, all of my little triangles are raised and that's going to make it easy for me to take some different color pens and just go in there and color in the different triangles. And I can be a little bit sloppy with this outside the lines because I do have that nice finishing frame that's going over the top. I just have to make sure that I get the color all over the raised triangles. And now I can take that overlay piece and just line it up so that it matches the triangles that I've colored. And then I'll have that perfect little stained glass window for the front of my church. The roof die is a stamping die, so that matches the one in the tiny house pop-up. It has the same shingle pattern. Now, I will sometimes, if I don't want to get ink on my fingers from a juicy ink pad, I'll use something like a little scrap piece of paper to press the die down on the ink pad. Then I'll use that little pickup tool, that magnetic pickup tool from Spellbinders. We do sell those on our website to lift the die over and onto my cardstock. Then when I run that through the machine, it is both going to die cut, score, and press the stamp into the piece at the same time and then I'll get that cool shingle pattern that will match the one for the first floor. And it is scored to fold right up the middle. To clean the die, I just use water and a rag. Okay, so this piece that makes the second story for the church just needs to be folded on all the score lines. So I'm going to start with the two tapered tabs at the bottom and the tapered tab on the side. So there's three tapered tabs, then just like with the tiny house on the bottom, there are score lines to basically make a four-sided piece with the tab that connects it on the other side. But then up the middle, there are valley folds. So those will fold into the piece. So just by working those valley folds, I'll be able to bring this piece flat where it lines up with everything on the other side. Okay, so then on this side too, it's just going to accordion fold and just kind of tuck in there. 
and then the tapered tab will attach to the other side. So let me actually just open that up again. That fold right there, I need to make sure that's right in the center. And then that little tapered tab can attach to the other side. So I'm going to add my strong glue to that tapered tab, bring the other side over, and just make sure that everything is straight. So giving that glue a pinch for a second so that will set up. Then now I basically have the structure of the second story done. You can see it's a little four-sided second story, but has those valley folds so that the pointed parts can, can collapse inward. Now these two are going to glue together. What I like to do to work the fold at the base is actually fold them outward. That just works the little fold at the base and then bring them back together and glue them together. So that's going to be the holder for the charm. And then right here, that is a cut line. That's what the cut line I was talking about earlier that makes it really easy to fold those towards the center. And then you won't ever see the cut line because the roof is going to cover it. Okay, so now I can flatten this down and attach the charm holder so that it's just a double thick version of the charm holder. It's actually glued together all the way to the base. Completely optional, but depending on your charm, you may want to color the little hooks on the charm holder a color that will more match the charm that you're planning on using. So since I'm going to be putting a cross on the charm holder, I'm going to take a brown pen and just cover the pegs that basically come through the charm so that they're less noticeable. So later on when I go to add this charm for real, those little pegs coming through will kind of blend in with the cross. Okay, but I'm going to take that off for now because I first need to get the roof on. There is a hole in the center of the roof that the charm holder will fit through. So I'm just going to weave that through until the roof sits right at the base. And then I can just lift up the roof to make sure that I have everything straight and that I have an equal amount of roof showing on either side of the second story. Then I put glue all over the triangle section and attach the roof to it. And while I'm waiting for that to set up, I can flip it over and do the other side. So just putting the glue all over the triangle area and then just attaching the roof to it. And if you are using glue, just watch that your glue hasn't migrated lower than the fold so that it is actually pinning your roof all the way down. So I can see on this side that my glue kind of squished out over the, the fold area so then I want to just make sure that the roof does have an overhang. In other words, the bottom of the roof isn't glued down to the side of the story. If you are new to the tiny house pop-up, you'll want to watch the assembly video for that die set to get to this point where you have a house and a roof ready for decoration. Tabs are at the back, so that makes this the front of the church. So I'll start with that decoration. My stained glass window is going to go near the top and then I have those double doors to go at the bottom. And then I'm going to surround those with the door frame that was cut out of the slightly darker color. I like to decorate the front of the church first so that then when I go to put the second story on, I can make sure that the pegs in the charm holder are pointed towards the front of the church. So just making sure my tapered tabs are out on that second story and then also for the tiny house. So the tapered tabs outside and then flatten it down. And then what I want to do is slide the second story on, making sure that my tabs are pointed towards the front of the church. And I want to get that roof of the tiny house up into that notch that's at the center of the second story. So essentially, I want to push that down as far as it'll go. You can see the score line ends up being just a little bit lower than the second shingle on the stamp pattern. One way to keep those pieces together while you're working might be just to clip them together. I'm just using a little quilting clip. The adhesive goes on the tapered tab and then I'm going to kick that under and glue it to the roof. And I just want to make sure that it stays straight and pushed down as far as it will go in that flat position. Okay, then I just flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So the adhesive goes on the tapered tab and then I just kick it under, making sure everything is pushed down as far as it'll go in that flat position and then attach the tapered tab. And then there you have the second floor. Okay, so you can put the charm on the hook. You put it on the bottom one and then over the top and it probably will stay on there. I mean, they generally do, but what I like to do is just make sure that in the course of operation of the card that it can't get 
pulled off of there, you know, easily. And so that's what I use that second cross for, or that second charm. And I'm really just interested in the top half of the upper hole. And that's why I like to have that with double-sided adhesive on the back because it's just really easy then to add it to the back to basically lock the charm on there. So what do I mean by that? After I put the charm on, I'm going to put that little hole piece on so that the upper hole is a little bit shorter. And then that's going to lock it on so that it cannot come off of that upper hook. So I basically get it on to the charm holder and then I'm on the back here. And then I'm just gonna go in there and add that little piece and have it just be a little bit lower than the top of the cross. And that will lock those pieces together so that they cannot come apart. Now in the instructions on the packaging, I do address that you may need to do that. And I just show that you could use a little thin strip of paper. However, I just find cutting the little upper half of the hole is just as easy. And then I know it fits the charm perfectly. So I cut six windows for my church and I'm going to put two on each side. And so I'll start with the yellow window backers so that it looks like the lights are on in the church. And then I will put the frames over the top of those. And then I can just shift the house to where I can still see the side that I've decorated and use that as a guide for the height of my next windows and then continue on until I've added all six. Adding the church to the card is just like you would do with the tiny house. You just need to make sure that you leave room for the upper story. So I'm going to flatten it down where the two tapered tabs are over the top of each other, not next to each other, but over the top. And then it's this edge that goes into the fold of the card and that can go anywhere along the fold. But I want to look out here on the right and make sure that I choose a spot that will hide the charm. So I can go up as far as here and it will be hidden in the closed position but I'm gonna come down a little bit to give myself more room. I love glue for this. My favorite is Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle, and we do sell both of those items on our website. So getting the first tapered tab down, I like to lift up the card to make sure that I don't cross the fold, but that I come right up to the fold with that tab. And then I'm just going to press that down. All right, now I have basically the back tab is attached and all I need to do is add my adhesive to the upper tab. And then I'm going to keep everything flat, close the card against the exposed adhesive. So just making sure I give it enough time and the first time I open it, I go pretty slowly. I reach in there and just kind of help that house open up. And then now I've made that cute little church inside the card. It has that cross charm on top that will pivot, you know, it'll go this way and that. And then the only other thing I wanna do, it, this really helps the tiny house for when it wants to close down, is this back left corner, I like to curl that under a little bit. I just use a bone folder. And then this upper right corner, I do the same. Those are the corners of the roof that hit the card first. And by curling them under, it really helps it learn how to close down nice every time. So this card is ready to be finished. I've decided that it's going to be a wedding card. So the three decorator dies that I used are our pattern plate tiles, wedding charms, and hexagons crosshatch. So here's how I finished out the interior. One thing I'd like to point out is that those double hearts are actually the charm, and I just took my scissors and removed the hole at the top and the bottom. I assembled the bride and groom from our wedding charms and then created a bouquet for her using the little flowers and stems out of the tiny house pop-up. And then with the pattern plate, I just cut it into borders and used it on the front of the card and the interior. So a great way to fill in some space. And then the best wishes and the rings come out of the wedding charms. And that just requires an A2 envelope to mail. Here's another wedding card idea. This is the one from the packaging of the die set. And for this one, I use the stones that come in the tiny house pop-up to create a path up to the door of the church. And that octagon shape set comes with the bandbox pop-up. Okay, the school assembly is going to be essentially the same. Cut your tiny house and roof and then assemble the charm holder and second story in the same manner. Now for this one, I like to color just the bottom peg of the charm holder. I usually color that black. And then I do the same thing with the bottom part of the bell charm. I color that black to be the clapper. 
So just like with the cross charm, I get the bottom of the bell on first, then put the top part over the upper hook, and then I like to lock it into place by adding the upper portion of the hole on the back of the bell and then lowered just a little bit to essentially make that hole a little shorter so that it is locked onto that peg and can't come off. Attaching the upper story to the house is exactly the same as with the church. So I just get it on there, press down in the flat position as far down as it will go, adhesive under the tapered tabs and fold them under. And I'm just making sure that the bell is facing forward when the tabs on the house are toward the back. The school sign is also a stamping die, so that is optional, but if you'd like to ink it, then just press it into an ink pad. It is a smaller die, so I like to use my scratch paper to do the pressing, and then I use the magnetic pickup tool to pick up the die and move it over onto my cardstock. Then I just roll it through the die cutting machine, and that will both cut and stamp it at the same time. Another option is just to roll it through the machine without any ink, and that will press the school word down into the piece. And then you can use a brayer and some ink to roll over the top, and then that gives you the reverse, where the letters are whatever your original cardstock color is, and the ink is used to color all the area around it. For styling, I use the school sign on the front plus the big double doors. And then for windows, I go back to the smaller windows out of the tiny house pop-up for the school, and I even like to add a couple horizontally to the upper story. Or you could even try mixing the windows, so maybe the arched ones on the first story and then the smaller ones on top. I decided on a 5x5 five five square card and trimmed out my black pieces with some postage stamp edges using our Border Blends Trims die. And then I'm just checking the location. That school can go anywhere in there as long as the bell is hidden. And then exactly like with the church, I add adhesive all over one of the tapered tabs. I lift the card up to make sure I don't cross the fold, but that I get right up close to the fold. And then I just get that first tab down. After that sets up, then I add adhesive to the other tab and close the card. And then giving it a second to set up, then I open up the card. Okay, so already I see that I have a material issue, which is I used some cardstock that is actually chalkboard cardstock. I thought that, oh, that's so cool for a school card. But that finish on that chalkboard cardstock is just grabbing that roof. The roof does not want to slide across that chalkboard finish on the cardstock. It's really giving me fits. I am never a fan of starting over. I will not let a card best me. And so my idea was if I could get a little bit of wax on the edges where they hit the chalkboard, it would probably slide. And that worked perfectly. I just actually rubbed my fingers across a candle and then across these edges. And then even though it leaves a little bit of wax on the chalkboard, it doesn't matter to me because I knew I was going to chalk it up anyway. And I'm just using regular chalk. I am redoing School is Cool because I had it a little bit too close in the first time and the roof kept erasing the S. And actually, I didn't even move it far enough because as I close it, the roof is still coming down and hitting my S and smudging it a little bit. But I'm okay with it. It is supposed to be an imperfect look like the blackboard in a school would look with its eraser marks and everything. I used three other die sets to complete my card, the Enjoy from Enjoy the Ride, some of the office charms, and then one of the decorator rectangles out of the slider box. I found a piece of pattern paper that looked like corkboard, so that was perfect. And then the Enjoy is cut using that same chalkboard cardstock so that I could add chalk marks to it, tucked in the school sign, and then some of the push pins and binder clip from the office charms. And then inside the card, I just added the pencil and a push pin from the office charms. The finished card measures five by five, so I can mail that in an A7 envelope. When you go to decorate your card, you can always decorate it as a top fold card instead of side fold. The assembly is the same. It's just the orientation of the card and how you decorate it. Now for this one, I use the school sign as the planks in front of the door by just die cutting them out of pattern paper and then flipping them over so the word was underneath. Another great die to accessorize the school would be our bookworm die set. So here's a card where I've used a bookworm on the front of the card and even one attached to the school behind it and then one peeking out from the second story. Plus there are so many great school papers out there. These ones are from Bella Boulevard. 
that church is going to be great for wedding cards, but then also for Easter and Christmas. So lots of choices there. And then with the school, of course, you can send those school cards to your favorite student, but maybe also for your thank you cards for teachers. I love to end assembly videos with some inspiration by our very talented design team. I love all the shimmer and shine in this card by Lois Bach. Happy wedding day on the front and then inside best wishes with the wedding charms and the church. Just such a pretty and impressive wedding card. And then so impressive is this double wide woven basket by Sue Small Kreider where she's created a happy Christmas theme with a light up church inside. And she reports that this is a 3D display piece, so it's not meant to fold flat. And then a wonderful school card by Jen Webster, where she's used the bookworm on the front of the card and then inside the school, but then also animated her students using our Bambox pop-up. And I just love everything about this card. The Church and School Tiny House add-ons is available now from a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com, where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.